I'm Laura and welcome to a full body Pilates workout today. So as always make sure that you look after your body as we go through the workout and choose the options that feel appropriate for you. Take any breaks when you feel you need and we'll make our way down to get started. So feet to the bottom of your mat, hands to the back of your thighs and then gently roll your body down. And just taking a moment to find our alignment. So bring your heels so that they're sit bones distance and they're a comfortable distance from your bottom. And whatever space your feet have between them, so do your knees. Gently nod the chin towards the chest so the back of your neck is long. And we can see more of the ceiling in front of us than behind us. But once we're there, we want to feel the back of the rib cage heavy down onto the mat. And if that's difficult to achieve, we feel that the back of the rib cage is hard to bring down, we can pop something underneath the head. So a block, um, a towel or a pillar, anything of the sort. And then we're going to start with our breathing here. So bringing your hands onto your front bottom ribs, taking a deep breath in through the nose. Deep breath out through the mouth, so feeling the thoracic breath and we want to feel the sides and the back of the rib cage expand on your in breath and then narrow on your out breath. So expansion on your in breath, exhaling, narrowing on your out breath and feeling the back of the rib cage heavy. We'll do two more breaths like this and I want you to feel how the back of the head, the back of the rib cage, the pelvis and the feet just relax deeper into the mat. I'm going to change this breath and we're going to make it into a deeper breath if we can and a breath with the count of five. So when you're ready on your in breath we're going to breathe in two, three, four, five and out two, three, four, five. Again in two, three, four, five and out two, three, four, five. Now keep going in your own time. And this breath is what we use when we do one of the exercises called the 100. Because the breath counts in five, that means that one breath in and out equates to 10. So we breathe this way 10 times and that takes us through the movement up to 100. That's why it's called the 100. So let's just take one more breath with this count of five in and five out. And that's something that we're gonna focus on as we come into the 100 a little bit later on. So keeping with this breath, we're now going to find the deep abdominal muscles. So on your next out breath, draw gently the navel in towards the spine and feel the pelvic floor lift up between the thighs. And on each breath that we do, we wanna feel that we're controlling the in and the up of navel and pelvic floor. On each out breath, we're feeling that we reinforce this. And then let your arms rest to the sides of your mat. So as we draw navel to spine, this engages our transverse abdominus. And as we draw the pelvic floor up, it's the sense of narrowing the four bones at the bottom of your pelvis, your pubic bone, your tailbone, and your two sit bones. Once we have this connection, on your next out breath, you're gently going to tip your pelvis towards your chest. So lifting the pubic bone and tipping what we call your pelvic triangle. So the triangle is your two pelvic bones and your pubic bone towards your chest, lower back to the mat. And then inhaling, simply bring your two pelvic bones and your pubic bones so that they're level with each other and to what we call neutral pelvis. So when you're ready again, exhaling to tip the pelvis backwards and inhaling to tip the pelvis into neutral. And you'll notice that the top of the pelvis becomes heavy as we tip the pelvis back and how the bottom of the pelvis where the tailbone is becomes heavy as you tip your pelvis to neutral. And you're just going to do one more of these in each direction. As you find neutral, we're now going to make this movement into a shoulder bridge. So we're going to begin by tipping the pelvis backwards. This time we're going to start to lift the tailbone, the back of the pelvis, the sacrum, the lower back, the lumbar spine. Then we're going to start to lift the waist and the rib cage, the thoracic spine. So you go to a height that you feel comfortable with, keeping any tension out of your neck and your shoulders. 
Pause for a moment and I want you to check that we've got a straight line from our knees, hips to our shoulders. So we're not allowing the tailbone to drop down and we're not allowing the ribs to lift up. So we're keeping the front ribs softened, the back ribs wide and that feeling of pubic bone lifting towards the navel, towards the chest to keep the front of the hips long and keep the back extensors relaxed. We're going to roll back down. So the back of the rib cage comes down first. We find the waist, the lower back, the sacrum and then the tailbone. Let's do this a few more times. So exhale in to initiate that backwards tilt, feeling the control of the abdominals as we peel each vertebrae up, feeling the back of the hips, the glutes, the hamstrings, to feel that opening through the front of the hips and the thighs. So we're really trying to stretch the back of our body, our spine, and open up the front of our hips in this. It's really nice to mobilize the spine, mobilize the hips, and feel the work in the abdominals and the glutes and the hamstrings. So try and keep your arms relaxed on the mat, your shoulders, your neck relaxed as well. And we're just going to do one more repetition of this. So rolling up and back down for our last time. So as our spine finds the mat, as our pelvis finds the mat, let the pelvis come back to neutral, which helps to stack the spine. And just identifying our checkpoints. So the tailbone under the pelvis is heavy. Three bones at the front of the pelvis so that they're level with each other. And we should feel that we have a space or a feeling of lightness through the lower back. The rib cage down as we mentioned before, the shoulders relaxed and the back of the neck low. And this brings our spine into a neutral position or as close to a neutral as we can, the safest place for our spine. We're gonna keep it here. Bring your feet and knees together arms a little wider to a low V and turn your palms up. So spiral the arm bones out, open the chest and feel the upper back heavy into the mat. A little squeeze of the feet and the knees. We're going to roll our hips and our pelvis to the right side. So the left side of the pelvis and the left foot will peel off the mat, but I'm keeping both shoulders, especially the left shoulder, attached to the ground. I'm checking that my thigh bones don't slide. So we want to make sure that both knees are still stuck and in line with each other. Initiate with the abdominal connection to draw the hips and the knees back to center. Let's go to the other side. So we rotate, we roll, we're moving from the pelvis, the legs just follow, the upper body stabilizes. So as I'm rotating to the left, I'm drawing my right shoulder deeper into the mat. That gives me that stretch down the side of my body and into my lower back. And I come back to center. So keep going, my breath for this is inhale as I rotate, exhale as I come back to center. So the movement of our pelvis and our legs is determined by how still we can keep our upper body. So for me, the most important part is stabilizing my upper body to get the nicest and deepest stretch that we can get around our waist. So just one more to each side. So the left side is going to be your last repetition. So at the moment we're just mobilizing, we're just warming up the body. When you come back to center, part your feet back to sit bones distance, around sit bones distance, interlace your hands and take your hands behind your head. So thumbs reach down the length of the neck and think of picking up the back of the skull. So dropping the chin towards the chest, elbows in your peripheral vision. This helps to widen your shoulders on your upper back and also widen your chest. Spine curl. So take a deep breath in. Exhale to lift the chest up. Inhale to lengthen the spine back down to the mat. Now exhaling to lift, we're initiating from the front bottom ribs, from the rib cage. That way we're going to isolate the thoracic spine and the movement in the thoracic spine, we're going to feel the abdominals do the work. So each time that I lift and lower, I'm making sure that I'm not pulling on my head and my neck. I'm keeping my head heavy in my hands as if my hands are a hammock for my head. So what we want to feel is that as we lift, the front bottom ribs slide down towards your two pelvic bones and the space between your two pelvic bones and bottom ribs gets shorter. Okay, so we should feel then the load and the work in our center.
it is a neck movement, so our neck is supporting the weight of our head, but we don't want to feel that it primarily comes from our head. So the chin doesn't completely drop to the chest, we're going to do two more. We keep a small space between the chin and the chest. So last time, and then we lower all the way back down. Okay, release the arms, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. We're going to let the arms lift, we're going to let the backs of the shoulders lift from the mat, and then we're going to gently feel the arm bones sink into the shoulder sockets, the shoulder blades soften into the ground. So we're reaching the arms up, the shoulder blades are widening away from the spine, and as the arms drop into the shoulder sockets, you feel how the shoulder blades gently draw in towards the spine. And the distance between my arms as I do this is staying the same, the length in my neck is staying the same. So the distance between my shoulders and my ears, my shoulder blades and my ears. So I'm only going as far as I can without creating lots of tension in my neck. And this is what we want to keep for the next exercise. So as you drop gently the shoulders into the mat, stay here. Using that feeling of pressing down with your arms, as we press down, we're going to lift the head and shoulders up. And then we're going to lower the upper body down. So the same breath pattern as before, we exhale to lift up and then inhale to lower. Now we're keeping that same feeling in the head and the neck. So my head and neck lifts because I'm initiating from the front bottom ribs. Because I'm flexing my thoracic spine, not because I'm flexing through my cervical spine, my neck. So as I lift up this time, we're going to stay up, we're going to have a go at that hundred. So with the breath, we're going to start to pump the arms. So the arms go up and down, moving from my shoulder joint, not my elbow joint, or my wrist, or my fingers, and moving from my shoulders. I'm feeling that I'm pushing down. Now our breath goes in, two, three, four, five, and out. Two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, out. Two, three, four, five. Two more breaths. Keeping the chest lifted, the back of the neck long, and the shoulders relaxed down. Last breath, keep the tailbone on the mat and the feet relaxed. And once you've finished your out breath, lower your upper body down. Relax your arms. Take your fingers, your hands to your pelvis. So finding your two pelvic bones, because we want to find some feedback now as to what's happening in the pelvis. We're going to take a breath in and as you breathe out, float one leg up to tabletop. And your challenge is to keep your pelvis, your spine still. On your next out breath, lower this foot towards the mat and then lift this leg back up. And we're going to keep going with this, keep going with this breath pattern or, ch or choose a breath pattern that feels comfortable for you. So noticing with the touch of our hands whether our pelvis is moving. What it's going to be inclined to do is rotate towards the weight of our moving leg. So what we want to do to counterbalance that is feel the opposite side of our pelvis heavy. Almost feel as though your pelvis is trying to op oppositionally rotate. So I'm moving my right leg, my pelvis is slightly wanting to rotate to the right, so I'm trying to rotate my pelvis towards the left. So once this foot lowers, lower it all the way and we'll try that on the other side. So using your out breath to lift, navel to spine, pelvic floor lifts, back of the ribs and pelvis into the mat. And then continue with your lower and lift. Checking what happens on this side, because sometimes our sides differ. One side may feel more challenging than the other. And you may find that you aren't lowering the foot all the way to the mat. That also doesn't matter. Your range of movement depends on what is happening in your body. Can we keep tension out the neck and the shoulders? Can we keep navel towards the spine? So next time we lower this foot, lay lower all the way down, we're going to bring the first leg up and we're going to challenge this more. So before we do anything else, feel the pelvis draw down, feel the rib cage draw down, same with the navel and up with the pelvic floor. So those actions are going to help to engage the whole muscular torso. So all our stabilizing muscles. So it's not just transverse abdominis and pelvic floor that helps us stabilize everything around our center. Now we're gonna see if we can get a sense of lightening the second leg. So it's not 
an action yet, it's just a feeling in our second leg. I'm trying to lighten the foot off the floor and the tension is in my abdominal muscles. If I feel able to, I'm going to float my second leg up to tabletop. And what will indicate if, this, if our body's not ready for this yet is if our lower back arches from the mat, if our ribs lift from the mat, if we feel tension in the neck or shoulders or our neck is arched, or if we get a sense of abdominal bulging, which is when the abdominals press up to the ceiling and create a doming action. Okay, so check into your body, bring your feet back to the first option if you need to. Now we're going to stay here and what we're going to have a go at is a double leg stretch. So bring both knees and feet together and what I would like you to do is actively draw the navel in to bring the lower back into an imprint. So I'm not sinking and doing a really big tuck of my pelvis and use my abdominals to do the work. Okay, so we should feel the tailbone a little bit lighter on the mat, the lower back a little bit heavier on the mat. Now arms resting at the sides of your body and when you're ready in your out breath I'd like you to reach both legs out. Inhale to bring both legs back in and again exhale deepen navel to spine pelvic floor connection feel as though you're lifting your pubic bone up towards your belly button. Now to lessen the load on the torso we extend the legs higher towards the ceiling and also what we can do is not quite fully extend the legs and we go within a range that you feel comfortable. And if you want to increase the load, we want more challenge, take the legs slightly lower, but again, checking in to the body. Can we keep navel to spine? Can we keep breathing? That's another indication that we're working at a level that's not appropriate for our body. If we feel our breath really restricted. So just two more. And last one. And as you bring your knees into your chest, Give yourselves a hug, so holding our knees in and just take a gentle rock side to side on your lower back. We're going to come back to our hundred, so bringing the feet to the mat, reaching your arms up to the ceiling. So we've got our three options, feet on the mat, both legs at tabletop or both legs stretched out. Those three options that we've done, we're going to use them in our hundred option. So when you're ready, exhaling to lift the head and shoulders up, arms press down. Feel free to keep the feet here. Lift one leg, deepen and float the second leg, or bring the legs together and reach the legs out. Off we go for our hundred breath. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. Now feel the legs long, feel the squeeze of the legs, the length through the crown of your head. Deep abdominal connection. You might be getting a little bit of a shake with me this time. And we've got one more deep breath. Feel the arms strong. Feel the shoulder blades slide down the back. And when you're finished, bend the knees, lower your head and shoulders, take your feet to the mat, take them wider, and then take a really relaxed knee roll to the side, one side and then the other. It might even feel nice to rotate your head in the opposite direction to the knees. So create some heat in the abdominal area now. We're gonna bring our feet and knees back to the center and take a side lying position now. So I'd like you to find a nice straight line from your head down to your feet. Feel free to use a pillow cushion or change your arm position um, if you need to, especially for any shoulder issues. And I want you to check here that we've got our ears, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles stacked on top of each other. Imagine as if you've got a wall behind you and you're stacking both shoulders, your pelvis and your feet against that wall. Lift and lighten your waist off the mat and that's going to engage the side abdominals, your obliques. And hand can support in front of your tummy or on your hip. Now we're going to take a lift and lower with our top leg. So when you're ready on your exhale, lift the top leg only as high as you can without allowing your waist to drop into the mat. And then we lower on our inhale. So exhaling to lift, inhaling to lower. Now your challenge is, 
as well as to keep the underneath waist lifted to check into how still your pelvis is. So we're not allowing the pelvis to roll back, forwards or lift up towards the rib cage. So both sides of the waist stay equally as long as we lift and lower. So as well as a hip exercise, it then becomes uh, an abdominal exercise. Knees and toes face forward, so we're staying in parallel with our leg. And we're gonna do two more. Now the next time we lower our leg, we're gonna keep both legs together and we're gonna do a double leg lift. So on your exhale, both legs lengthen and lift. Inhale to lower. So you'll probably find that the range of movement is a lot smaller than your first movement with just your top leg. And that's okay, because we're trying to keep the same um, sensations. So waist lifted, pelvis as still as we possibly can. And there may be a little bit of movement here. Okay, then now the next time you lift, we're gonna stay up. Top leg stays where it is, but the underneath leg lowers and then lifts. Lower and lift. Now imagine your top leg is trying to get further away from your underneath leg. Your underneath leg is still trying to reach towards the top leg. So the underneath leg has to work harder to get higher. Now think of the inner thighs, the closest part towards your pelvis. Squeeze that part of your thigh bones together rather than your feet. Your feet may not even touch. Last two. Last one. Excellent. Now squeeze and hold this position. Squeeze and hold. Squeeze and hold. Can you lift a little bit higher? And last three, two, and one. Lower all the way down. With your top hand, push yourself all the way up. Swing your legs around. Let's go to the other side. So coming all the way down again. Find a position that is comfortable for your head, your neck. Stretch the legs all the way out. And body stacked. Waist gap lifted, so obliques really working. And top leg lifts and then lowers. Lift and lower. We've got the sun shining in today. So my feet are feeling nice and warm in the sunshine. So just checking in, how still is your pelvis? How still is your spine? Can you challenge your balance by taking your hand to your hip? Now a little bit more stable on this side so I can challenge myself a little bit more here. So we're moving with control, we're moving within a range for our hip that we feel we can stabilize. So last two, keep breathing and moving. Letting go of tension from our neck and our shoulders. And then when you lower this top leg, squeeze the legs together. Both legs lift, both legs lower. A little bit of a wobble going on. And lift, and then lower. Lift, lengthen as you lift, because what we want to feel is that we're lengthening the muscles. We're almost trying to reach the legs out of the hip joints. Excellent. So last two here. Last one. Stay lifted. When you're ready, underneath leg lowers and lifts again. It's a challenge for the top leg as well. The top leg is trying to get further away from the underneath leg, which is gonna challenge the underneath leg more. So the further you lift the top leg, the more range it allows the underneath leg to do. But again, check where you can go without moving your pelvis. And three. And two. Last one. Squeeze and hold. Squeeze and hold. Can you lift a little higher? And three. Two one and slowly release come around on to your tummy into a prone position okay 
arms at the sides of your body, palms face up towards the ceiling and nod your forehead down towards the ground. Feet to a comfortable position or comfortable distance and we want to check that we can bring the pubic bone and the two pelvic bones down onto the floor as we're in this position. Glutes and legs relaxed here, navel towards the spine to lengthen out the lumbar spine, the lower back. Take an in-breath. On your out-breath, lift the fronts of the shoulders from the mat, lift your arms and peel your upper chest and head off the ground. And lower. So I use my out-breath to lift, my inhale to lower. If your breath is the other way around, no problem, you do what feels best for you. The challenge here is when we lift, is that we can keep our glutes as relaxed as possible. Feel the abdominals do the work to stabilize the spine. And last two, so it's narrowing between the shoulder blades, widening across the chest, reaching along with the fingers to feel the shoulder stabilizing muscles, the ones that help to draw the shoulders down away from the ears. Now if we can, we're going to lift the chest, we're going to stay up in this position. Now remember that 100 breath and that movement of the arms, we're going to do it here. So keep the glutes relaxed, let them go, that's the hardest part for me as well. We're going to start to pump the arms. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. Now what I'm going to think of doing here is keeping my shoulder blades dropping down my back, narrowing in towards my spine and moving from my shoulders. What we want to check is that the hands don't come too high than the shoulders because the shoulders are going to start to roll forwards. Keep that feeling of the backs of the shoulders lifting up to the ceiling, your priority. One more breath, keep the lower back lifting as we draw the navel in and then lower all the way down. Take your hands by your shoulders, push all the way up and take a child's pose. So hips sit back, arms stretch forwards. Okay, so coming into an all fours position, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. I'm going to take a little bit of a glute workout here and I'm going to take this into a plank series. So I'd like you to stretch one leg back. I want you to check that your chest is between both arms and your supporting knee is still underneath your hip. Your body's going to want to sway towards a supporting leg. So keep everything central. Keep that feeling of pubic bone towards the belly button and lift the straight leg up off the mat. Lower back down. So we've got that work in the glutes, the hip extensors, the glutes, the hamstrings, as well as working the shoulder stabilizers, the spinal stabilizers, finding our breath and keeping our alignment. So there's a lot going on in this. What we want to make sure is that we're not lifting too high so that we're sinking into the lower back. It then becomes a lower back exercise and we want to make sure that we're working through the glutes and the hamstrings because it's part of the body that tends to be quite weak in our bodies. So when we lift this leg, keep it up. I want you to bend from the knee so the ankle is over the knee. Extend out. And again, bend and stretch. Last one, bend and hold, flex the ankle. Little pulses up, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, point the foot, stretch the leg, lower it down, slide it in. Other side, so reach it back, lift and lower. Use your out breath to lift, your in breath to lower. Out and in. How still can you keep your torso? Is your chest still between your arms? Is your knee still underneath your hip? Lift and hold, bend in, reach out. So I'm trying to imagine that my thigh bone and my knee is resting on a tabletop. I can't lower it any further to the ground. Stay in, flex the foot, little pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stretch out point lower and slide in. Take a little stretch back. Hold it here. From here. 
we're going to come up to plank. Okay, so our last exercise. If you can, you're going to walk your hands forwards and shift your shoulders forwards. So now we've got our hips slightly further forwards than our knees, our shoulders slightly further forwards than, uh, sorry, slightly further behind the wrists. Tuck your toes, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, hover your knees. Inhale to lower. Now this may be where you want to stay, and that's okay, because it's challenging. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower. Now this time, if you can, you're gonna push the ground away, lift and straighten your legs, pressing the heels back. And what we want to find is a straight line in, with our hips, our shoulders to our ears. So hold for a moment. We're lifting pubic bone towards the belly button. I'm thinking of narrowing my shoulder blades in towards my spine to lift my chest. My quads, the front of my thighs, are working as well as my glutes. When you're ready, we're gonna lower the knees. Take a little stretch back. And we're gonna make this a little bit more challenging if you want it. So we come up last time. Lift the knees, stay here or stretch the legs. You may want to stay here. If you can, keep your chest between your arms. Press down heavier into your right leg, lighten the left foot. And if you can, lift the left leg. Lower it back down. Press the left leg into the ground, left foot into the ground, lift and lighten the right leg. And lower, one more each side. How still can you keep your torso? Remember that lift we did in all fours? We lift from the glute without sinking into the lower back. Lower down, lower your knees, and take that child's pose again. Come all the way to sitting. Any position that feels good for your knees and your hips, and we're just gonna take a little stretch to finish. So take your one arm up, let the other hand come to the mat, let the elbow soften, the shoulder soften, and take that arm all the way over to a side bend, dropping the hip into the mat. Let's windmill the arms, so inhale to go up and over, exhale to the side. As we come up, release the hands behind you, fingertips light on the mat, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back and down. Breathe in and out. Drop the shoulders further. Last one. Release and roll the shoulders back and down. And we're done for today. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you could, please subscribe below and click the bell icon so that you get the not notifications for future classes. Thank you. Bye.